Hi everyone, so time for another video. Um, we finally got around to looking at the uh, single sign-on mobility agent um, and um, following on from the previous two videos, integration with Azure Active Directory. So the topology that I've got um, is I've provisioned uh, 40 Authenticator. It's just simply got its IP configuration and its trusted hosts configured. I've not done anything else. Um, there's two um, Windows 10 boxes on um, a VMware deployment. Um, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to set up the entire thing from A to Z. Um, and we're going to test using uh, a fully deployed 40 client instance that's got the ZTNA and EPP license. Okay, so what are the requirements to achieve this? So the first component is that you need 40 Authenticator. It needs to be running at least 6.5. You need 40 client Um both of my instances are running 7.2.1 uh, and the single sign-on mobility agent needs to be checked if you're going through the full, fully-fledged installation. Then you have a few options. You have the fully-featured 40 client. Uh, we have that with the ZTNA and EPP license. Um we also can get the standalone uh, 40 client free version with single sign-on mobility agent enabled. Um, and if we get time or perhaps in another video, I'd actually like to do um, a deployment with just the 40 client single sign-on agent installed, uh, which is just that and it has nothing else, no VPN, no ZTNA, no EPP. Um, we're using Windows 10 machines um, and we're using the same users that we have used in the previous two videos from Azure Active Directory. So we need to uh, go into um, Azure Active Directory, um, find enterprise applications, all applications, and then new application. Okay, so from um, home enterprise applications or applications, click create your own application. A window opens up on the right hand side. We're going to call this 40 off uh, OAuth. And um, you do need to click integrate any other application you don't find in the gallery, non gallery, and click create on that. That will then go through. Um, and you can see that under all applications, uh, the 40 off or off one has created. So once we are on this page, you need to stay under home enterprise applications. Just find the one that you've newly created, click into it. What we need to do is we need to assign some users and groups to this. So I'll click into there. So can we find yeah the two users we'll do these two for now we'll assign those so we go into the overview and we need to take a copy of the application id i'll just grab that and put it on another screen for now ID and we also need to get a copy of um, create a new client secret. Okay, so um, in Azure Active Directory, um, I've clicked app registrations and then you've got certificates and secrets. I'm going to create a new client secret and put 40 authenticator. 180 days is fine. And then I will get a secret ID and a value. So I want to copy the value and not show you the entire value. 
Okay. That's been done. And on to the next bit. So we're now we need to go over to 40 Authenticator. Okay, so this is not covered in the documentation. However, we do feel as though this is necessary. Um, if you go into Azure Active Directory in the portal, go to App, App Registrations, click the app that you created, go into API Permissions, make sure that for Microsoft Graph, you've got Domain Read All, Group Read All, People Read All, and User Read All, and granted for device directory, for default device directory, I should say, is checked. Um, without this, I could not get it working, and other people in another Discord server also have the same effect. So now that we're inside 40 Authenticator, um, I believe that we go down to, so authentication, promote off servers, all off, create new, Azure, Azure AD will do, shall do, Azure AD, all off source is Azure, directory client id is going to get hidden from you but i will we need to check in tech include for sso yes we do tenant id provision azure tenant id where do we get that from ah there we are Lovely. Tenant ID. So that's been set up. Okay, so just before we do that, there is something that we need to do in EMS. Now, uh, I will demonstrate it later. Uh, EMS isn't required. Um, however, the first endpoint that we are doing this on um, is linked and managed via uh, 40 client EMS cloud. So logged into my cloud instance, endpoint profile, system settings, uh, go into the profile that's relevant. I'm just using the default one at the minute. Um, scroll down and I need to enable the 40 client single sign on mobility agent. Um, and I need to put in the details of that. So I'll do that now. There we are, so I've popped the details in there. Um, the 40 Authenticator, which we'll go over in a minute, the default port that is used for uh, Fortinet single sign-on is 8001. So obviously if you change that, you need to make sure that you're pushing out the right information to your 40 clients. Quite a few settings to go through here. Uh, Log into a 40 Authenticator, Fortinet SSO methods, general, um, these are the options that have been defined by default. The key ones are specifically enable 40 client single sign-on mobility agent, default port, set your secret key, um, the rest of the default settings, um, user group membership, passive, uh, default settings again, and save. So now we need to go over back over to the Windows 10 host itself. So as we're pushing the config out via EMS here, just make confirm that it is connected to your EMS instance. It is here. Uh, this has already been a while, so it will have pre-synced. Um, you go into settings and you make sure that the enable single sign-on mobility agent configuration has been pushed and that the server address port and pre-shared key is correct. So I think that I actually need to create a fabric connector on the gate that it's passing through. So single sign-on agent, uh, 40 often. Okay, so, and as you can see, the status of it is up. So I'm gonna go back over to the virtual host. I'm gonna log out here, sign out, and back in again.
Okay, so this was the point in the video where we were supposed to go through and it was all supposed to work as expected. Um, two days later, um, after quite a lot of struggle um, and a big shout out to everybody in various Discord servers and Reddits that, um, and the consulting system engineer that actually uh, designed this integration, uh, a little bit of collaboration with him, um, we 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 were able to identify what the problem was and why it wasn't working. So I just wanted to cover that in uh, here at this point in the video, uh, and then we can proceed. So if you look at the requirements, we theoretically satisfy all of these requirements. We've got 40 clients running 7.21. We're running Windows 10 or Windows 11. We've joined the machines to Azure Active Directory. That's covered in the previous two videos. And we have an Azure AD tenant. What I did is I went and downloaded the base 40 authenticator. It's known as VM 00000. So it doesn't have a license associated with it at all. What we started to see was when we did when we looked at the logs from the 40 client, it was trying to communicate with 40 Authenticator. However, it looked that looked like via the certificate handshake, the 40 Authenticator was rejecting it. I was able to figure this out via some packet sniffers. Uh, I basically noticed that the 40 Authenticator was ten sending a TCP reset. So, after that collaboration with various different people, um, I managed to get a, 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 a 40 authenticator base license. I'll have the specific SKU flash up on the screen, um, which covers X amount of endpoints and five single sign-on mobility agents. As soon as I did that, applied it to the 40 authenticator, rebooted, um, you will see what happens now in the next stages of the video. So on the 40 authenticator, monitor SSO sessions, refresh. As you can see, there is nothing there at all yet. Go into my VMware instance, log in. Wait for it to do its thing. Open up 40 client, just make sure that everything is good there. So it's uh, the settings for the mobility agent are correct and configured. Jump back over to 40 Authenticator, hit the refresh and as you can see, we now have the session correctly established and Fortinet single sign-on using a pure Active Directory environment, no on-prem at all, is complete. So I'm quite happy with the length of this video now. Um, I will create another video just going over the Fortinet single sign-on use cases. Uh, how it can be applied to security policy, that kind of thing. Um, but I I'll leave this video by saying, I think this is a fantastic integration with um, Azure AD. Um, I've had lots of clients that are simply moving to a pure Azure Active Directory environment. There's no on-prem at all. And they've been screaming out for an integration like this for some time. So I'm really genuinely pleased with it. As always, let me know your thoughts on this video in the comments. Uh, there's 26 other videos. Two have been released today alone. Um, if you could watch some of those other ones, it really helps with the algorithm. Thanks for your time as always. Speak soon.